Hey everybody, Dr. Green here. Today's video is going to be a quick overview of running multi-step jobs in MapReduce. Now when we use MapReduce, we don't always have an algorithm that is suitable to be run in one set of steps. What do I mean by that? Well, if we go ahead and look at the results from one of our reflections, we can take a look at the example file from the MR job library. You'll see here that we actually have defined steps. Okay? These are two steps. One has a mapper, a combiner, and a reducer. One just has a reducer. What this means is that when this map reduce process runs, not only will it map, combine, and reduce, it will send the output of this final reducer to a second reducer. Now note, the most interesting thing here is that we have actually left off the mapper and combiner functions. This means that you can actually leave steps as empty when you are running the map reduce algorithm. Sometimes that is suitable to your problem, sometimes it is not. Uh, but I can say this, it is very common to use map reduce with multiple steps. There are many algorithms out there that do not find themselves mapping well to a simple map reduce uh, single step combination. Or perhaps they simply take up too much space or time when mapped to a single step. So we spread them out over multiple steps. Now, if you remember, just as a reminder, a, a very simple map reduce job looks just like this. Def mapper, def reducer. Now we can also put the combiner in there. And you'll see a mapper takes a self, uh, this empty <clears throat> anonymous parameter and a line. The reducer takes self, the key, and the various values. So we can <clears throat> extrapolate those to multiple steps, right? So here we have a mapper, which is mapper get words, combiner count words, reducer count words, and reducer find a max word, right? What you will see in this example is the mapper get words. It takes the argument self key value. Uh, we use this anonymous function. It's just reading in a file. It finds all in the line based on this regular expression. Okay? You can look up regular expressions. That's outside the scope of this video, uh, but this will find all the words. And it yields just the word to lower with the number one, which means we're emitting a key of the word with the number one. Combiner count words takes that word and the counts, right? And it sums them all up. Reducer takes the argument self, key, and values. And you'll see the key here is the words, right? <clears throat> so this gets the words. And then what it yields is the value none, along with a pair that has a sum of all the counts for individual words. Then once we get to the reducer, find max, you'll see that what the reducer takes is all these word count pairs, right? We use an anonymous function with word count pairs. And then we yield the maximum value of word count pairs. Uh, <clears throat> the main function, uh, the if name equals main down here is very standard. So you'll see how this all works. Uh, it's very plain to see that you can quite easily use multiple steps in your algorithm. Now, just a reminder to show you all how this works. Uh, I have two terminals created here. I'm going to go ahead and do my docker compose up minus D. I've already modified my hadoop.env file and my docker compose appropriately, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to go back over here and I will do my docker exec minus it name node and I will execute the bash command. And you will see if I list what's in my workspace, there we go. So let's go into workspace. Uh, now I can check to see what's out on DFS, HDFS. Uh, so I will see this. You'll see that's the inappropriate command. It's not going to give me anything. I'll go ahead and look at the root to see if there's anything there. Okay, so we have a couple things there, nothing that I need to worry about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the directory slash data. I am going to do an HDFS DFS minus put book. This is a book I downloaded from Project Gutenberg. Uh, you can see this book. If I look at it here, it has lots of stuff in here. It's actual text. Uh, the title of this book is Last Run on Venus by James McKinney. So I'm going to put this into slash data. Now, if I do an LS on slash data, you will see I have it there. Now note the repository I'm in and the current code base I'm using. This is the result from your previous reflection. Uh, we actually give instructions on how to run the code here. So you can actually see if I would go through here, I can just type in Python 3. You know, I can use autocomplete with the tab here. You'll see uh, we have Python 3.5 installed. I'm going to run first job.py minus star minus r. 
and I will go ahead and <clears throat> do my output. This is just my first job. It is my simple job that just has your typical map and reduce steps. If you remember here, we're going to count the characters, <clears throat> the words, and the lines, uh, and it's yielding the sum of all those values. Now note here I did not use a random file like you may have used in some of your reflections. I use an actual book so the results are going to look just a little bit different. Uh, you'll see this is our typical map reduce output that we'd expect as we run our job. So we'll see this running. It's running the job. As I said, the file is a little larger, so it's going to take a little longer than you're used to. The map function is now through 50%. Done, and it's on the reduce. <clears throat> it's streaming the final output, removing the temporary directory. Uh, and there we go. Okay, so you'll see 75,000 characters, 1,700 lines, 13,648 words. Okay, we can do this with all of these files, first job, second job, third job, fourth job. So we'll take a look at second job to see exactly what that does. Uh, we'll let that run here while I pull up the code. <clears throat> right, it takes the argument, sum the words we've seen so far, send all number occurrences, each of the item is going to give me word count pairs. Uh, so I accidentally, I believe, restreamed that to the same output file, to first job output.txt. So we're going to have some overlapping output. That's okay. I can fix that next time. Or just rerun my job because this is a small job. There goes my map function. There we go, it's all running. It'll be winding up in just a moment here. Now you will note in second job, we did have two steps. We had a map combine reduce and a map combine reduce. So that's why you're seeing this process run twice here because it's going through the reducer again. There you go, and it found the most common occurrence of the word, the. Okay. So this is the fundamental way that you run these jobs. Uh, from the previous <coughs> reflection, you will see uh, that some of the things we asked you to do were actually quite clear. Uh, if you just wanted to deal with words beginning in the, the letter C, if the first letter in the word is C, just omit that word. Uh, you may have actually said if word of zero dot lower, meaning lowercase or upper, however you had to do that. Okay, so you'll get slightly different results depending on what you do. In fourth job, uh, we did a very similar thing, but in the reducer saying cut that off at five. So I hope this video helps. I hope it gives you a good overview of what it looks like to have multiple steps inside of a map reduce job. Uh, and I hope it is very clear that you are passing these arguments forward through this, right? They just propagate down through the functions. You can implement as many of these steps as you want, and you can always reuse these functions if need be, which is also another common practice. So I hope this helps. I hope it brings you clarity, and we will see you next time online.